Welcome to the Aikidojo podcast. I am David Ito, Chief Instructor of the Aikido Center of Los Angeles. And today I am joined by... Santiago Garcia Almaraz, Chief Instructor of Kodokai Dojo Salamanca, Spain. And we are in Spain at the Kodokai Dojo. Hey, good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I would say welcome, but you're, really, you're welcoming, <laughs> welcoming me. Hey. Uh, so hmm, what should we talk about today? I think that we should talk about you. <laughs> you want to talk about me? Yeah, oh, yeah. You did many podcasts, you know. I have. Know. So it's your turn. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I have kind of question my student did, right for me. So I will try to conduct this podcast this only this time with your permission. <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> for you. Okay. So first thing I want I would like to ask you is about you know who are you. Well, as I said before, I am David Ito. I am a fifth don, a chief instructor of the Aikido Center of Los Angeles. I inherited my role as chief instructor from Reverend Kensho Furuya, mm -hmm. who passed away in 2007. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you know, as many people practice martial arts, we have kind of, until we decide what martial art is, you know, our martial art, what is your background in? martial art or you have any other antecedent like nothing real i mean i did kendo for about six months i did karate these are as children as a child i did kendo for six months wow. i did uh karate for maybe less than a year i think i have a yellow belt in karate <laughs> um but other than that no formal martial arts training no. i have a background in boxing oh. um but nothing formal okay so when you start in aikido or how you met it, aikido in your life. I started Aikido when I was 19 and a half years old. Wow. It's, it's not young. Usually people, you know, like 19 years old is when you already know. You know? Well, if you were, if your parents were trying to make you into an Aikido teacher, <laughs> you're supposed to start when you're six and a half. Yeah. The sixth year of the sixth, the sixth month of the sixth year of your life, you're supposed to be, you're supposed to start martial arts training. Mm -hmm. But I started when I was 19 and okay. a half. Okay. And what? What, what what do you remember about you know how it started with hard easy oh it was, it that, was you know it was really really hard really um the dojo was very physical it was like a gladiator's arena mm -hmm. and so for the i mean the like i was said on the other podcasts someone on the very second day beat me up because <laughs> i couldn't i couldn't figure out how to roll and the person just got frustrated and beat me up and it was so hard and i was so out of shape um that I said, I'm gonna give this six months and then quit. Wow. Because I didn't wanna be embarrassed to all my friends. And so I thought, I'll just give this six months and then just say it wasn't for me. Uh -huh. And then after a couple of months, it just got better. It didn't get better in a sense that people would stop beating me up, mm -hmm. but it got it got to where I could at least roll. Okay, okay. And then everyone was beating me up. Really? Oh, oh. I mean, every day someone would beat me up and I couldn't get better at the technique. Uh -huh. So I just started working out like crazy. I started, um, I probably worked out over 20 hours a wow. week just to get in better shape than everyone else. Wow. So they could beat me up, <laughs> but I, yeah. but they could, they, but they would never dog me out. I would never get tired. Oh, wow. I mean, I lifted weights. I um, did a ton of cardio. I probably did one to one hour to three hours wow. a day in cardio because I would ride my bike to junior college and back. And that was an hour each way. Wow. Great. But the other way is going downhill. But, you know, you're 19 years old and you're trying, you're, it's easy to get into shape. Right. And then I remember one day I was, we were eating dinner and I was like this, oh. And then someone goes, do you lift weights? <laughs> and I go, yeah. And they're like, oh, no wonder you're so, you're so stiff. Oh. Sensei, he lifts weights. And oh then Sensei just God. started going off on me about lifting weights. And I was like, okay, okay, I'll stop. Wow. And so I stopped lifting weights probably when I was like maybe 21. Wow. So I, I, I think you first, Teacher, formal teacher, what Sensei Furuya? That's yeah, yeah. Free, free Sensei wow. was my first, first Aikido. Yeah, lucky. <laughs> first and in, yeah, he got. I guess lucky. You got the first sad. <laughs> he was intense, and uh, if my very first Aikido teacher was wow. uh, Kensho Furuya. Wow, wow. So, uh, do you have any? After that, you have a previous, you know, training with other Sensei. No, I whatever? only train with Furuya Sensei. This is not common today, no. What do you think about uh, that? Well, I don't know. I mean, Furuya Sensei was a you know, um, 
he was a pro professional Aikido teacher mm -hmm. who had, um, who was well-rounded. Mm -hmm. He was, a, he was a, uh, it's funny because everyone knows him for his Aikido, but yeah. his sword and Joe mm -hmm. were much better than his Aikido. Hmm. But I studied with him for 17 years and one day. Wow. The day after I celebrated 17 years, he passed away. Wow. So what, what do you think in your personal opinion that Sensei Furuya have a special to, to be only with, you know, don't, don't try it. Was, I, I, this is my teacher, that, that's it. I don't know, I went to several Aikido schools beforehand. And, and like the one school, the students didn't, the student and the teacher didn't, didn't show up on time. Mm -hmm. They were like a half hour late and I was like standing outside and they go, oh, you're here for Aikido? Mm -hmm. There's like one guy and one, uh, and one student, one, one teacher, one student. And, and then, you know, they, they didn't bow in, they didn't uh, warm up, they just started going at it. Wow. And then, but then the, the person wasn't skillful. I don't even remember the person's name, but he wasn't skillful at all. Mm -hmm. And then I was just like, this is, I don't want, this is not yeah, real martial art. Yes. And kind of like quietly walked out the door and left. And then I went to another dojo where it was, I mean, there was a lot of people. There was, had to have been 50 people there. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting there and um, someone sat me down. I watched the whole class and I'm watching the class and I'm thinking, why is nobody doing what the teacher's doing? Hmm. And then they're, you know, kind of jumping around and all this stuff. And then at the end of the class, I just sat there wow. and nobody came up to me. Not the teacher, not, not another students. They got, they cleaned the mats. They got started putting the mats away, hmm. started to get dressed. And then I was just sitting there and I, I felt really awkward. And then I, I got up hmm. and started to walk out. And when I got to my car, someone ran out and they're like, Hey, do you have any questions? And I was like, Oh no, I don't know questions. And I was thinking, if you want people to join, like, why would hmm. you not talk to them? Hmm. And then I was studying kendo at the time. And um, the kendo teacher was my my mother and father's uh, college friend. Mm -hmm. He was like sixth on in kendo. And my mom called him and asked him if he knew of an Aikido teacher. And he said, well, there's this one guy <laughs> in uh, little Tokyo, downtown LA. And I'm from the suburbs. So downtown LA is like a completely foreign place. And he said, there's this one guy down there that is really good at Aikido, uh -huh. but I'm letting you know right now, he's really strict. <laughs> wow. He's really strict and he lives on top of the dojo. And I was oh. like, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, and I, I, I go there and the sign says, sorry, we're closed, but you can hear like people rolling and doing all this stuff. And then as soon as you got close to the dojo, these two dogs just jump out, rah, 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 wow. and you're like, oh my God, what's going on here? And then <laughs> someone comes on, they're like, can I help you? And I'm like, I'm here to watch Aikido. <laughs> and I'm already late, right? The class has yeah. already started. And the person like pulls the dog back and he's like, come on in. And then you come in and like, you immediately walk in and the air of the place mm -hmm. is, like you go, whoa, this is a real martial arts school. Mm -hmm. Everyone's training super hard, mm -hmm. sweating, wow. uh, smashing each other. There's these two rabid dogs <laughs> in the corner. And, and, and Fru Sensei wasn't even teaching the class. Wow. And I was just like, whoa, this is real Aikido school. Mm -hmm. And then the guy comes up and he talks to me. And then he's like, well, if you want to you join, just you know, bring a check for this much money and come on back. And I said, oh, okay, I'll come on back. He's like, when are you coming back? Wow. And I'm like, I'll be back tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't come back the next day. And I was like, so like, oh, I told them I was going to come back. Wow. Um, and so I opened, I went, I went home, told my mom, opened up a checking account to get the checks and then showed up two weeks later. And then the guy, they didn't even care, but I thought they would care. Yeah. And then I didn't see Furu Sensei himself, gosh, for at least a month. A month? Yeah, wow. probably a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Go go. We 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 walk deeper in that. How, how was your relation that time with Sensei? As a student, no relationship. He was a pre. No. He was a priest, and you would see him walk in at at the end of class sometimes, mm -hmm. um, and it never spoke to you. You never spoke to him. He never spoke to you. But he had this this air about him that was scary, <laughs> right? Like he he did, he looked unhappy. Everyone bowed to him. Call him Sensei. You, you bowed too. Yeah. Just because everyone else is yeah, bowing. Yeah. And then he wasn't like, hey, everybody, how's your day going? And then he walked up the stairs. And then if you if you heard him, he yelled out for someone. Then someone <laughs> someone briskly ran up the stairs after wow. him. And that okay. was it. And 
how you feel about in this world because what's everything new this this kind of things for you like yeah what, what and, is this and you know? he, and he was he was um overweight right yeah but I, you didn't even see that that i mean i can tell you right now i didn't <laughs> even see that i was just like oh my god this guy's <laughs> this place is crazy this person's strong right i'm gonna the you know like whoa this is in like this is a real martial arts school right This, right. this is not like on TV where right. the, the ancient master is throwing out like yeah. um, fortune right. cookie wisdom. <laughs> Everyone is scared of the teacher mm -hmm. and he's, he is scary. Wow. That's great. That's great. Do, do, do you think this, this, thing, this feeling happened now? With me? No. I'm like, <laughs> hey, how's it going? What's your name? Are you interested yeah, in Aikido? Yeah. Great. Oh, you, of course you could do Aikido. Yeah. If you walked in here, yeah. you can do Aikido. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. He Don't got it. Like, different. You got to, I mean, no, I don't think people today could, no. I mean, even, I mean, that, in, for instance, his intenseness, mm -hmm. like, rubbed off on all the students. Like, everybody there was, like, so intense. Wow. That you, today, I'm like, maybe I'm not that intense. And so, well, I know I, that I'm not as intense as Sensei, but everyone says I'm intense. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't want people to feel like they're going to get beat up. Mm -hmm. when they yeah. first joined the dojo yeah. like if i saw someone beating up a student on the second day yeah. i would flip out on them yeah but i don't Be think before I, was almost not normal but it was, oh, it was part no, of the class no it was normal that's right <laughs> like like roll roll and then just beat you up and then you either you as they in those days they said you either sank or you swam right and then so you you sw you were started swimming Yes, sir. Okay, yeah, I'll I'll, I'll practice now it. Now it's imaginable. Well, no, now yeah. we don't we I if we don't smash anybody, yeah. but it, in the old days they smashed you because mm -hmm. it was really thought that only the elite should survive here. That, do you think that this is the, the maybe one of the problems that because Aikido have sometimes this kind of reputation? I don't know because at our dojo it was I mean it was a martial art, right. and I don't know about other dojos because I don't really visit other dojos, but at our dojo it was a martial art. Mm -hmm. And then you, today, how do you create this air of, I mean, like, you're so afraid of the teacher, mm -hmm. like yeah. deathly afraid, mm -hmm. like, nope, I don't want him to talk to me, you know? And yeah. then today people are like, oh yeah, hey, yeah. Dave, can I call you Dave? Yeah. And I go, call me whatever you want. Yeah. And then they go, okay, Dave. And I go, you know, even though I don't use, I don't go by the name Dave. Yeah. Hey, Dave. <laughs> and I just go, hey, how's it going? Yeah. You know, but that's that thing. Like. It wasn't that sense he was rude to you or mean to you yeah, directly to your face. That. He didn't no. even I mean, people think in that yeah that side. No, he he you weren't even on his radar, and then he just walked past you. Mm -hmm. He wasn't friendly. He didn't say hello. He didn't say good hello, hello, hello. He didn't shake every person's hand. Yeah. He didn't shake people's hands. Mm -hmm. Do you know that? Wow. Free sense. He did not right. shake hands. Mm -hmm. And people all the time used to try to shake yeah. his hand. <laughs> It was crazy. It is. He would say, "I'm Japanese. We don't shake hands." Right. And they put their Steve hand Japanese. out. <laughs> yeah. Or they would touch him uh -huh. on the back. Oh my God. Same yeah. thing. He yeah. didn't like to be touched. Yeah. Don't like it. <laughs> wow. So do you have any, any, con you know, controversial or something again, with Sensei Fuya about your character and his character? Or everything oh. was smooth or? or oh, no. We, <laughs> well, it's not that like he and I um, butted heads. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't, I lived in the suburbs. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm Japanese American, but I don't speak Japanese. Mm -hmm. none, none of my friends are Japanese. Mm -hmm. My mom speaks fluent Japanese, but she didn't teach us Japanese. So I didn't understand the Japanese way. Yeah. And so I'd be like, hey, everybody, what's up? <laughs> and they're like, why don't you shut up? And I'm like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, everybody, here's a total jerk, you know? And like, it, it was one of those things where, I didn't understand that I'm supposed to be a certain way because I'm Japanese American. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like one of the students told me that they, when they joined the dojo, they got got down on one knee mm -hmm. and pledged their undying loyalty to Sensei. Wow! And then I went, oh, was that a thing? <laughs> was I supposed to do that? And I was like, oh, I didn't do that. Oh, and honestly, uh, uh, even up until the point that Sensei died, mm -hmm. I thought he hated me. Wow! Yeah. So I mean, I'm. And I, I didn't purposely um, rebel against him. Mm -hmm. I, I was, he said I was willful. He said I had a, a bad temper. Mm -hmm. And I am willful and I do have a bad temper, but I, I don't think I ever showed it to him. And mm -hmm. he told people, oh yeah, David, he's got a bad temper, watch out. And I was like, I never lost my temper here. Because <laughs> you couldn't lose your temper here. Yeah. If you showed any anger 
mm-hmm. toward another person, people would just start beating you up. So you would have to be like, hi, even if they're smashing you. Hey, what's up? Yeah. Oh, no, I'm okay. The blood, yeah. I don't think it's mine. <laughs> I'm going to go outside and pass out now. So, so in, in the way you talk, I, I understand that you learn more, more than Aikido. Well, the way I talk now is that it was I am the last of the old taught the old way, right. which is the teacher is super mean to you, figures out who you are, and then purposefully makes your life hell in order for you to change that thing about you. People don't do that today. Right. They don't They don't um, dig a tiger pit and what, let you fall in and then go, okay, we're gonna make you suffer. Mm-hmm. You know, like um, in Eiji Yoshikawa's book, Musashi, mm-hmm. uh, Takezo, the well, Miyamoto Musashi is captured by Takwan the priest. Mm-hmm. So he um, puts uh, Miyamoto Musashi in this room with the only thing is there's books. Hmm. So he locks him in there as part of his thing. And so all the only thing he has all day to do is just read books to change his character. Right. You can't do that to the people. Mm-hmm. You, you, I could not do what Free Sensei did to me to change someone to make them a better person. Maybe they would just quit. Right. Uh, but the thing is, I'm the only person that Free Sensei ever did it to that it worked. Hmm. Every other person just quit. Wow. I mean, it was, it was brutal yeah. to be shown the error of your ways in a brutal mm-hmm. mean way is just so there was no compassion there hmm. but the thing is that thing burnt me so badly that today i'm still kind of like i and that was uh 22 years ago when he did that to me that i t- i today um am still burnt because of it what did he do to you well he said that I had like anger management problems, which I do. Wow. And then he kicked me out of the dojo for two years. Wow. Two and then years. with no, the only thing he said was, you have to, you're, you're, you're kicked out for two years. Well, first I paid my dues and then I, there was an envelope on the bulletin board with a name on it with a check inside of it. Right. And I went, what is this thing? <laughs> Tore it open. What is it? I put my check back in the dues box mm-hmm. and then it showed up in the mail huh? at my house torn in half really and i was like what wow. the heck does this mean <laughs> you know because i don't know anything so i'm like what does this mean and then um one of the students called me on the phone and they said yeah so you're kicked out and i was like for what what did i do wow. and then he said the only um uh instruction i got was you need to reflect in- inward and um understand what real uh, gratitude is and if you you're out for two years if you don't want to come back just stop paying your dues but your dues are due before the first of the month every month never be late if you're late or you or you you don't send your dues in we'll we'll take it that you quit and i was like what and then so you're set off on your own he said go any dojo you want do any martial art you want do whatever you want just don't do it here and then so at first i was really mad like i'm gonna and then all these people called me on the phone, like, I'll, I'll um, give you money to start a dojo. We'll start a dojo together wow. and all stuff and all these things. And then I waited like... I'm um, sorry. What, what degree you, you was in that time? Uh, Nidan. Wow. Nidan. Second degree hmm. black belt. And then I was all mad and all these people were... I mean, all, all these uh, Aikido Center of LA, LA ex expats were calling me on the phone i mean like wow. instantly hey i heard you got kicked out hey man hey why don't you come to our judge why don't you come to hey i could probably talk to this person and, and get you the opportunity to teach hey i'll pay you i'll give you money to start uh three different people offered me money to start my own dojo and i was like yeah man let's do it and then i like sat with it for a little bit mm-hmm. and i said okay what if sensei's right mm-hmm. And then, I, and then I, I went on this journey of self-discovery that I'm still on today. Yeah. That and then even today, like when I go to like, oh, I don't. Yeah. I, I go, oh, I'm not supposed to be doing that. Right. And so I, but I can't. It's very hard to uh, to understand that thing. Right. You know. So therapy, books, working on yeah. myself, meditation, retreats, all these different things. You come to understand yourself. And then I'm the only person since they ever asked to come back. Wow. No one, no one in the history of Aikido Center Los Angeles <laughs> has ever been kicked out 
and ever been asked back. I'm the only one. Wow. And then now today I'm the teacher. Great, 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 great. So we walk a little bit on time. So when Sensei died, Sensei Fuya died, why? How you come to? Oh my God, you know, that like, was the uh, hardest. I, I, you, you, you know how? I felt your hand. Okay, I don't. I take care. Or the thing is going that way that you are there. Well, um, a lot of the head students had left or yeah, were leaving at that time. Yeah, uh, we were moving the dojo. Mm -hmm. um, at that, t at the time of Sensei's death, I still thought he hated me. <laughs> and then he dies, and then the lawyers take us out, take me and this other person outside, and they're like, "Who's going to do it?" And the other person goes, "I'm leaving." And I said, "I guess it's me." Right. And then so for like months, years, I don't even know how long, I I thought, man. <laughs> Just that, that's the, how it is. Yeah. I always have to be the one cleaning up. Mm -hmm. I always have to be the one left holding the bag. Mm -hmm. Everyone else is going to live their life and now I have, to do, I have to do the dojo. All right, let's do this dojo thing. Mm -hmm. And it took right. me, it took me 15 years to be, I'm right. just now becoming comfortable as the wow. teacher, 15 Com years later. Comfortable. <laughs> Comfort comfortable. Yeah, like, like, like you feel like everything is in his way or no that we can start moving you, you not the way i want it yeah. just the way it is that right? but we can start moving forward that's right that, i mean it took 15 years wow. and i'm not like a you know stupid person or an imbecile mm -hmm. or something but it took it took 15 years to fight all the battles to get to this place it took yeah. 15 years to gain the experience to get to this place where now i can start teaching wow 15 years yeah so in all these 15 years how, how do you surpass all this kind of thing? Like, okay, well, I have I, to do it. I have, I, know, have, I have to. Well, as I talked about in the other podcast, when I was really talking about the, the one trait every martial artist I have, I was really talking about myself. The one trait I have in spades over every other person is determination. Like, right. I, I can't, I don't know what this means. I'll figure it out. Wow. I can't give up. Hmm. You know, and that's, how, that's something I learned in, you know, Fruya Dojo back in the day that, they're going to beat you up. You just have to come back tomorrow. Hmm. They beat you up. You have skinned elbows, yeah. a hurt knee, um, hyperextended elbows. You just have to come back tomorrow. And like hmm. the last 15 years, I've just been coming back tomorrow. And I mean, my students will tell you, like, there are times when I'm like, I want to quit. I want to make this other person the chief instructor. Hmm. I can't handle this anymore. I've, hmm. I text yeah. you all the time. Yeah. Oh, I can't <laughs> handle this. It's so yeah. hard. This is BS. Wow. So, so... Now you look back for 50 years ago and from now, what do you think that is the big difference inside you? Like how you manage the things? Well, how, how do you manage the students? How do you take care of the class? How you? Oh, it's it's still an ongoing process. You know, mm -hmm. as I talked about in other podcasts, that the hardest part of becoming the teacher is not being a warrior anymore. Right. I mean, you just can't beat up anybody who's bothering you. You can't just you know, get in someone's face when they're acting weird, you know, because I was the senior. Mm -hmm. So any problem that needed to be fixed, it was my job to fix it. Mm -hmm. Someone was acting out. Someone didn't pay their dues. I bang on the door. Hey, man, where's that cash at? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. but today you can't. You go, oh, you can't pay your dues. Ah, oh, I see. Well, what can, work, what can we work out? In the old days when I was the senior mm -hmm. and the dojo enforcer, I would just be like, where's that cash at? Yeah. It'd be better be here on Monday or don't come back. You know, I'm like, wow. you can't do that anymore. And so as the teacher, you have to, you have to be more caring. Mm -hmm. But as that be, you know, teaching about nonviolence and that Fru Sensei was like, um, you're, you have too much anger. You're too violent. Mm -hmm. I didn't really understand. I'm like, this is a martial art, isn't it? Yeah. Don't you say it's a martial art? I mean, that's hyper, you know, like hypocritical. But now I, I get it that mm -hmm. as the teacher, every student is like a baby. It's like a child. Right. And then the thing which changed me the most mm -hmm. is when my son was born. Wow. Because as I'm holding this baby, I thought, oh man, what if somebody tries to hurt him? Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, I would just die if somebody tried to hurt him. And then I went, oh, everybody is somebody's baby. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. and that's why you can't destroy other people because if you don't want it done to you, you shouldn't do it to others. And if everybody is somebody's baby, mm -hmm. how can you kick this person in the nuts? Mm -hmm. how, how can you smash him in the face? How can you, I mean, I've choked people. Mm -hmm. I've kicked them in the, in, the, in the nuts. I've, 
you know, I've done all these bad things, giving yeah. people black eyes, mm. swept their legs and blew out their mm. knees. And I was just like, ha, 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 you're whipped. Yeah. But it's not part of the process, too? It, well, it is part of the process. You got to you gotta beat up enough. You got to beat up every person in the world to realize the only person you need to beat up is yourself. Right. right? And like, but that that is the moment when I realized, oh, Sensei was right mm -hmm. in that moment. And I was like, oh, I've been wrong all these years. And Neil says he's not even here to see that. Maybe see. Well, maybe no. he's, he's watching or something. No, yeah, I don't know. He's Buddhist, so that's true. That, <laughs> that's that, true. That fly just stepped on. Sorry, Sensei. <laughs> yeah. You know, but yeah, I mean, yeah. So um, if Sensei opened the dojo now, yeah. I will say one day your dojo. What do you think that felt the different about the structure, the way you know, the the time change a lot in my in, in Aikido, in Los Angeles. The, or, th the thing which Sensei you try to be really close everything I, I don't know because the thing is that if since he was alive i'd be the senior and i would <laughs> be, be a, great <laughs> i would be a better senior as i was yeah. you know like let's say he sure. came back today yeah boom he showed up ah it was all it was all yeah. a test and yeah. i go <laughs> at first yeah. you know after i after you revived me from a heart yeah. attack i would go oh well i get to be the senior yeah that would be cool yeah. because being the senior is easier than being the teacher right but i don't know if fru sensei would like or dislike by our dojo today. Mm -hmm. I think he would like the community atmosphere of the dojo. Mm -hmm. Right. But then I don't know if he would like the, I don't know if he would be um, comfortable or like the the level of martial artness. Really? Oh yeah, mm -hmm. because he's like, oh, hello yeah. on the phone. Oh, you're blind? Can't help you. Yeah. Oh, you got I, one leg? Yeah. Sure people with uh, uh, one leg can do Aikido. Oh, can I teach you? No. Yeah. Right. Oh, you have a weird haircut? Leave. Yeah. Oh, um, you're going to do a, a, a semester abroad in, in college? Well, just don't come back then. And you, you just go. Oh. Yeah. I mean, like, that's the, he would have to evolve and change with the times. And I don't know if he could have. Although I think he would have yeah. loved social media. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> well, social media as it is today. Yeah. I mean, there are still people that attack you, mm -hmm. but back Back when he was doing social media, a lot of people attacked mm -hmm. him. But I think people today are, are don't attack as much. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least yeah. they don't attack me. Yeah. You yeah. Know, but but I, I but I think that's the only thing. I I don't know because the thing he really really um, craved mm -hmm. was family. Mm -hmm. And at that time, you know, all you have were these like younger people, single people, very few family people. Mm -hmm. Today in the dojo, we have older people, younger people, yeah, and a right. lot of families. Right. So I think that he he might enjoy that, mm -hmm. and then he would he'd be older. He would be uh, 68, 68, 74 years old. Wow. So, yeah, 74 years old. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah, that maybe yeah. that age mm -hmm. would have softened. You know, I I always wonder what he, how he would view my children yeah. because they're crazy. Yeah. But then he might <laughs> like that, right? Yeah. Because, you know, yeah, but yeah. you don't know. I don't know what it would be like. I would. It would be nice to think that, you know, as a, a movie or something where in the end, Everybody rides off into the sunset, uh, one big happy family, but mm -hmm. I don't know. Wow, great. So we change a little bit, you know, the question, and we, we move to, um, right now we know how you talk about Aikido, how chance or how, you know, is modified for some teacher, whatever. What do you think that the, the, the students sometimes quit the practice in the dojo because they are boring or because Aikido is not, as you say, they, they don't see that as a martial art? Or they expect you know, more something more internal thing, or they I don't know. I, mean, I I think the main reason why people quit is because of expectation. Yeah. So on one on, in one way, when a person watches Aikido on the internet, what do you think they see? Mm -hmm. right. Do they see themselves throwing mm -hmm. or being thrown? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Right. Depending. No? Most people see themselves throwing. Mm -hmm. And so when they come to class, they're like, let's so throw some people down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, you're going to get thrown down now. Yeah. And they're like, whoa, I didn't get signed. I didn't sign up for that. Mm -hmm. And so there's that, that lack of expectation. Mm -hmm. The other expectation problem is that they've been watching Bruce Lee movies. Mm -hmm. They've been watching, you know, what's really popular right now. The, the, we don't, it's not the karate kid. It's the karate kid. Yeah. Right. Where Daniel San is doing yeah. all stuff yeah. and this, this uh, old wise man goes, yeah. you know, <laughs> you know, you know, speaks in broken English and, yeah. and helps him, you know, yeah. overcome his life. Yeah. They think they think that that's what martial art is. Mm -hmm. They don't. They only see 
A and Z. Right. They don't see everything right. between. Right. right. They don't see everything where the teacher destroys your ego mm -hmm. by destroying you, mm -hmm. and you're crying. Mm -hmm. Like, um, did you ever see Kill Bill? Yeah. Right. Um, when uh, I can't remember what her name is, but the um, Emma uh, well Emma Thurman, I can't remember yeah. her character's name. Um, the widow. Yeah. Goes and, and stu studies with. Um, yeah. Um, you know the the, yeah. the Chinese master, uh -huh. and right. she's in the yep. huddled, That's and it. and she's accidentally punches the wall in the middle of the night and it's bleeding. Oh gosh, it's so much suffering, but. In that suffering, she learned to love him, hmm. and then he taught her the five palm, five yeah. single strike palm things, or whatever yeah. it is. Then you think that's what it is. Mm -hmm. You don't see it day to day, every day, day in and day out. Training. Right. You got a, you got a broken toe. You got a stub toe. You got, a, you got a black eye. You got a, a hyperextended elbow, and you're like, yeah, I do this martial arts thing. Mm -hmm. And then you do Aikido, and then someone says, show me some Aikido, and you go, grab my wrist. <laughs> and they go, I'm not grabbing your wrist. And then they grab it, and you go, no, with the other hand. <laughs> yeah. You know, and then right, like, you, right. and that's the hard part, that the expectation of what, what martial arts is. Mm -hmm. And then also, our, t our society is, <clears throat> on a certain level, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't enjoy tradition. Right. Religion has lost its way, mm -hmm. right? So... You know, uh, the Dalai Lama says, like, when society, no, uh, someone said, when society pros prospers, mm -hmm. the spirit becomes impoverished, mm -hmm. right? And so today, people, they don't, they don't know how to stay at the same job mm -hmm. for their whole life. They don't know how to stick with the same woman, mm -hmm. like, oh, or, or man. And then they say, well, I'm going to get a divorce because I don't like this. Right. They don't know how to stick with something. Mm -hmm. In the old days, you couldn't just do whatever you wanted right. to do. Japanese Americans had to stay in their own lane. Mm -hmm. You couldn't get divorced because divorce were frowned upon. You couldn't get a job if you left your job because no one else would take you. But today, you go, well, I don't feel like doing this. I quit. I quit. I quit. Mm -hmm. And that you never really stay to see what's at the end of this journey. Mm -hmm. And martial Aikido and like all traditional martial arts, are there. it's a journey. Mm -hmm. You want to be able to choke somebody right away. You don't want to be choked. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to be able to defend yourself like that. That's not going to happen. That's right. There's there's so many levels that you have to go through to become a person that could just fight in the street, right? This fear, this technique, there's mm -hmm. all these different things you got to go through and you got to go through them in the dojo. Hmm. There's For the longest time, you have to hate the teacher. You got to hate the other students. And then you realize, oh, that guy who hit me, he was only trying to make me better. That guy that beat me up on the second date, he was only yeah. trying to make me better, right? right? Even though, I mean, that's kind of a jerk move, but you have to think the person was, even if they were doing it because they didn't like you, mm -hmm. it made you better. But how do you, how do you teach that to someone today? That's true. So, so for the young people, how, how do you think they, they, they could be attracted to Aikido? Because, you know, the point is that most of the time you have old people, you know, well, or how, because so many things to do you know not only martial arts so it's like what why they should choose what why some well but that some of that is that you have to wait for it to come back around because you figure now um you know you talk about what what is what is popular in social media right pictures right right now it's videos mm -hmm. and now it's short videos yeah 90 seconds is too long wow one minute videos mm -hmm. or what people can their attention span holds on to because mm -hmm. things move so quickly. Mm -hmm. But what I believe is that at some point people are going to come back and crave touch, wow. right? Because mm -hmm. you could talk to someone on a screen, hey buddy, that's my best friend on, mm -hmm. on Facebook, never saw him, never met him. Mm -hmm. But then there's this abject loneliness mm -hmm. that comes from just looking, staring at the screen that we all realize in the pandemic. Right. The pandemic taught us how, how much socialization and touch are necessary right. and if we don't have that mm -hmm. in our lives we feel weird right you know and so i think that when it comes back around people will start to go out more mm -hmm. they will start to do martial arts they'll look for something in which they c it can be social mm -hmm. and there's actual human connectedness mm -hmm. not over the screen as you're eating your bowl of fruit you know wearing your tie and sitting in your underwear mm -hmm. right right so from this point, you know, how uh, we know how that you do podcasts, you do articles in different magazines, you do two minute videos, you do a lot of things. How, 
how do you think is necessary today to obvious as Aikido? I don't know. I don't know what works, so I'm trying everything. I do two minute videos, I do podcasts, yeah, I do a blog, can, yeah. I do social media, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I do all these things. Mm -hmm. Not because I want to. Yeah. I'm you know, I I would prefer not to. It takes <laughs> a lot a lot of time. Yeah. But I don't know how people find mm -hmm. things. How do they find I mean, other than talking about it and um, Alexa hears you and then you know starts pushing in your feed yeah. martial arts or something like that but I, I don't know how people mm -hmm. find Aikido right yeah. it has to be something that you you go you know I'm looking for this thing and someone goes hey you ever tried Aikido and you go what's that and you go well okay. it's just martial art mm -hmm. and then the martial arts of the past I wonder if they're going to become passe mm -hmm. you know they're, they're going to become out of fashion because nobody wants to smash someone's face in nobody yeah. wants to choke someone to death nobody wants to kick somebody in the face they would rather do something which defends themselves in a way in which they don't have to hurt people mm -hmm. because I really think as the internet changes changes us we don't want to hurt people right I was talking with this person who's a um, a big time data science scientist on the internet and he told me that he was part of this think tank mm -hmm. and that one of the conclusions the think tank came up with was that the internet is going to become a tool for good mm -hmm. and become and the internet itself is going to become more compassionate and i said oh, i guess i could see that in maybe two or three generations he said one generation wow i said so that was their conclusion he said yeah in one generation the mm -hmm. the um internet is supposed to become a a vehicle for change mm -hmm. and compassion. Wow, great! And then he started listing all these ways in which it's starting to be that way. GoFundMe, mm -hmm. helping people pay for things that they need. Mm -hmm. You will attack someone on the internet, and everyone will attack you for attacking wow. that person. He said that it will become this 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 uh, vehicle for compassion. And I was right. like, but you know, one generation, I was like, I don't know, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't past. know about yeah. that. Because, but you never know, right? Like, mm -hmm. but that's what this think tank came up with. Mm -hmm. That, the, that they should start um, moving their, because this think tank was for um, hedge funds. Mm -hmm. And then they should start looking into hedge, uh, doing hedge fund stuff that were about compassion for mm -hmm. the future. Wow. I still don't know if it could be on general. <laughs> I mean, that seems awful quick. So in one way, do you think the pandemic bring good things? If you think a, a good thing like this, like a renovation? Like well, I, I was talking with um, Didier Boyette, mm -hmm. and Sensei, and he was like, yeah, I mean, it killed all the bad Aikidoists, mm -hmm. right? And maybe it did. I don't really know. Only Do only the strong survive? Yeah. Right? But a lot of people's, their minds changed, mm -hmm. right? Like, so we bring the things in one yeah. way, no? We sit down for a while, I think what happened with our life, you know? You know, we, we would do daily Zoom calls yeah. during the pan beginning of the pandemic, 6.30, People would come on, right. they would eat their dinner, we would be talking, mm -hmm. these people started drinking, mm -hmm. and people really started to come on there. Mm -hmm. But also what people, some people came on and, didn't, and, and then quit for coming to Zoom because they said they realized how mm -hmm. much human contact meant mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that going on Zoom is just not the same thing. No, they can hear you, they can talk to you, but, right. but grabbing your wrist mm -hmm. and then going to have a beer afterwards was so important. Mm -hmm. And then that's where I think in a generation or two, maybe things will swing back. Mm -hmm. And they'll be looking for a martial art, not about smashing someone's face in, right. you know, learning how to use a bullwhip to, you know, the, to whip people or using, learning how to use a bat to smash somebody's head in, but looking for a martial art that has a philosophy behind it. Right. You know, that it's not just about destroying people. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that Furu Sensei was trying to teach me hmm. 22 years ago. Wow. It's not about destroying people. Right. But I didn't know because I was like, well, it sure seems to work to me, Sensei. Yeah. You know. yeah. So, um, talking about the, the, the your life, how you manage your life, though your podcast, family, because it's a big difference. You have a family. It's I not do. like Sensei Furu. Sensei Furu, I live for the though your 24 hours. You have to share your life with. Yeah, and it's, <laughs> it, is, it is a very difficult balance. Hopefully, I'm striking the balance, but sometimes I don't think I am. Mm -hmm. You know, like my kids come up, I'm doing, I'm listening to a podcast, editing it. <laughs> they come up and I'm like, huh? What? <laughs> no, go ask your mom. I don't know. You know, can I get, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ice cream, whatever you want. I'm busy right now. Yeah. And so I don't, I don't really know. You know, yeah. that's the hard part sure. about balancing all these things with teaching. Mm -hmm. And I, I live an hour away from my dojo. So I have to drive in yeah. teaching um, my kids, my wife, yeah. my job and all these things. 
it's it's hectic. It is, it, mm -hmm. but the but this is this is martial arts, right. mm -hmm. having to balance everything, but still being ready to act. You know, you can't just be all about work, having all this money, but then someone, you know, breaks in your house and you're like, oh, oh my gosh, I'm so out of shape. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just do all this martial arts and then your family suffers. Right. Like I was in Hawaii once and I met this uh, high level Aikido teacher's uh, daughter. Mm -hmm. She's all grown up. And she said, oh yeah, my dad does, Aik does did Aikido. Um, we, we hate Aikido. And I was like, what? She's like, yeah, I took our dad away. You're like, oh, oh well, I was yeah. nice speaking with you, ma'am. <laughs> you know, yeah. but like that's that old old yeah, way, right? Of, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, right. but it's hard to balance that, right? It's hard to, you know, when I write something, like my three things I try to do when I write: don't write to others. You mm -hmm. know, like I'm, I got a beef with you, yeah. so I'm writing this article so that you'll read it and understand. So right. I don't write to other people. I don't lie. Mm -hmm. You know, like before I'd be like, well, this this. I'll make up a story that that yeah, yeah, that from, um, is uh, part of the story, yeah. and then that that that'll help reinforce my so I don't lie. And then the last thing is is I try to just write about what I'm. I, everything I write about right now is what's conflicting me at the moment: pessimism, mm -hmm. you know, um, motivation, because I believe that everyone is just like me, just mm -hmm. like you. And mm -hmm. so if I'm suffering from lack of motivation, mm -hmm. somebody else out there. Right. If I'm suffering from pessimism, probably someone else out there, right. you know, and that I'm not trying to become this famous writer. I'm not trying to become yeah. this famous anything. Mm. I'm just trying to be a martial artist. Right. So when I write something, I'm not trying writing this, hoping that it'll get a million followers yeah. from it. Yeah. You know, like I'm not trying to do that. I put my blog out there for free. It, mm. there, you go to my website, there's no advertising. Mm -hmm. I mean, may, I probably should. I'm probably the fool. I don't know. But yeah. But I'm not, I'm trying to get it to where people realize, like, I'm not trying to, to get anything from them. Mm -hmm. I'm doing my best to save my dojo, my martial art, and hopefully another dojo and another martial art mm -hmm. that maybe a kudo or kendo person reads my blog and goes, you know what? I'm not going to quit today because it, we're all in this together. The mm -hmm. karate teachers, the judo teachers, kendo right. teachers, you know, every martial arts teacher is in it together. Mm -hmm. And we have to work together. Mm -hmm. But if we, but if I go, oh, karate, hmm, yeah. judo, oh, judo is just aikido so much better. This, yeah. We're all gonna fail, right? You know, like if if the karate teacher sees me putting out my mats after their class, they should help, right? Not because they're great or anything, because in the spirit of budo, right, in the spirit of brotherhood, I want you to succeed mm -hmm. because if you succeed as a traditional martial artist, others will succeed in your wake, right. But it's hard for right. people to do that because mm -hmm. the easiest right. thing to do is just to compare and compete. Well, you know, karate, they do this. And then Aikido, we would just do this. Mm -hmm. Right. And right. then we're all going to fail. That's true. That's true. That's true. So with all that experience, you, you are here in, in, in Salamanca, in Spain, but you recently you come with Free Bayer League to open a dojo, a brand from Kodokai too. Uh, what what the advance for, for a guy? Where, where students won't open a school, you know? <laughs> like, okay, I don't know. I mean, this, you, you I, talk about, it, you know, teaching it doesn't look great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Um, <laughs> so, you know, being coming to the uh, Kodokai Valladolid grand opening and teaching there, it's really hard. And what, what advice would I give is it, you just have to be, you just have to stay the course. Yeah. It'll get good, it'll get bad. It'll get good, it'll get bad. It'll get good. It'll, and Day in and day out. Mm -hmm. Free Sense says it takes 15 years to become established. I totally believe that. <laughs> because it took me 15 years. Mm -hmm. So that all that person has to do is keep going. Mm -hmm. You will fail. Mm -hmm. Dojos are built on failures, not successes. Mm -hmm. That's what Free Sense used true. to say. Little failures. Hey, uh, oh sure, take the keys to the dojo. Uh, yeah, as long as you keep coming. Oh man, that guy totally ripped me off. Hey, yeah, you could be the manager of the dojo. Oh, that guy totally stole all our money. Well, uh, you yeah. live and learn. Hey, go ahead and teach. I know you're just first cute. Don't, yeah, don't, it's oh, okay. We can't have, we can't do that. You make all these mistakes in route to becoming the person that you're supposed to become. Mm -hmm. And then you be, you find your identity and then you're okay with, oh, you're going to leave? I'm sorry to see you mm -hmm. leave. Not like me go, oh my gosh, yeah. we're going to lose money this month. We're not going to be able to make rent. Oh no. Yeah. You have to say, well, hey, honey, do we, how much money have we got in the bank? I need yeah. a 500 bucks, right. you know, but like, that's just the way it is. But so the only advice I can give is for someone to be stubborn enough not to quit <laughs> because 
you you just can't quit. You right. you will get better. It will get better. Things will get better. Mm -hmm. Sooner yeah. or later, you will figure it out. Sooner or later, the world will see you. Mm -hmm. Sooner or later, the other dojos will all burn down because mm -hmm. you burnt them down. <laughs> Sooner or later, you will succeed. Uh -huh. You have to believe that. Yeah. You have to believe in yourself. You have to. I have to believe in myself. I have to believe in Free Sensei. Mm -hmm. I have to believe in the Aikido Center of Los Angeles. I have to believe in uh, Homu Dojo. I have to believe in Doshu, and I have right. to believe in Osensei, right. and I have to believe in Aikido. Mm -hmm. And if I can, I have to just believe. And this is no nothing happens by accident. Mm -hmm. Free Sensei didn't. He passed away on my watch. I became the teacher. He didn't pass away on Watanabe Sensei's watch. Right on my watch and then so it's left to me it's my job to bring free sensei's teachings aikido and the aikido center of los angeles into the next generation that's my only right. job i'm i am looking for the one where's the <laughs> one who's going to be the one that's going to take this whole thing over will it be my kids mm -hmm. i don't know well your son or daughter moved to la and become yeah. a chief instructor yeah. who yeah. knows yeah. you that's never true. know mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but my job is to bring this art, this dojo, these teachings to the next generation. So, in in what point you are right now uh, in this in this you know in this way in this path of Aikido? I'm just starting out. Start uh, today, regardless of my rank, regardless of my experience. Mm -hmm. Today, I feel like Shodan is Aikido teacher Shodan, mm -hmm. because now the path is ready to be taken. Mm -hmm. It took 15 years to get here, and you go now. I got a team. Mm -hmm. Now I got people backing me up. Mm -hmm. Now the dojo is this thing. Mm -hmm. Now we got to start fighting forward. Mm -hmm. And then teaching and learn, trying to learn how to be a competent Aikido teacher so that when that one person shows up, I can inculcate and teach that person the way of Aikido so that they can teach it to the next generation. Wow. Great. So next plan for the future? Huh? Because I know that I can say anything, but you have new podcasts, many other things. Well, you know, but <laughs> I'll be starting my own martial art called <laughs> no. David Brew. No, I just teach. It's just no, nothing is new. Uh -huh. It's all just teaching every day. Mm -hmm. Be there, teach, try to figure out how to teach my, my senior students mm -hmm. to teach their, their students better. Mm -hmm. That's what I, that's the thing. Fru Sensei gave, uh, gave me the key well, no, Free Sensei gave me the lock. <laughs> right. <laughs> but it worked. <laughs> and now I'm trying to find the key which unlocks right. that secret to make a student like me for the next generation. Right. So. Well, know. maybe we should stop there I, I, <laughs> yeah. as I rant around of all these different things. Um, okay. Thank you for interviewing thank you. me. Thank you very much. For um, I wish you all could be in Salamanca, Spain, enjoying the uh, camaraderie and the food. <laughs> um, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this podcast. Thank you. Thank you.